Use these skills to be your own data scientist. Hi, I'm Liz Durr, founder and CEO of Simularity. And there are a lot of concerns about the availability of data scientists. And in, uh, McKinsey and Company predicts that in the United States alone, we face a shortage uh, of nearly 200,000 data scientists, but we have a much greater shortage uh, of 1.5 million managers and analysts with the skills to understand and make decisions based on the analysis of big data. And so what we wanna do here is try and make that shortage a little smaller by educating you into what skills you need to be one of these managers or analysts that has the skills to understand and make decisions based on the analysis of big data. So first you're gonna need data and you're gonna need science to be your own data scientist, but that's not all. You're gonna need domain expertise uh, a willingness to learn new skills like basic statistics, a data analysis process, and some helpful tools. And the analysis isn't any good if you can't uh, communicate this analysis and persuade others based on the results of your analysis. So you're gonna need visualization and communication skills. So first, the science part. Let's start with the scientific method. You start with a question you do some research to figure out what you already know and then form a hypothesis. Then you do experiments or studies. Uh, you gather data uh, to prove or disprove your hypothesis. Then you analyze that data, come to a conclusion, and you can either uh, do more experiments if the conclusion was not what you expected or uh, if you're a scientist, you want to publish, but since we're business analysts, let's communicate the results instead of publish. So what do I mean by domain expertise? You know your business, so you've likely got ideas about where the problems are. We're going to solve a real problem here. There's really no point in being your own data scientist if you're not going to try and solve a real problem. So in case you're stuck figuring out uh, where there may be fertile grounds to improve your business. Um, you can look at increasing profitability, increasing revenue, reducing risk, or reducing time to market. Uh, come up with hypotheses in these areas and then turn your ideas about what might help you increase profitability into a hypothesis that you can test. So then comes the data part. What data do you need to test your hypothesis? It may be data that you already have, but it may be data you don't already have. So you need to ask yourself, is this data that you can start collecting? Or is it data that you can get elsewhere, such as from public sources like data brokers or uh, public data like the census? And finally, is this data in a form that you can use? And that's not a trivial question, actually. Um, for big data scientists, janitor work is key to is key hurdle to insight, says the New York Times. Data scientists, according to interviews, spend from 50 to 80 percent of their time mired in the more mundane labor of collecting and preparing unruly data before it can be explored for useful nuggets. So getting the data in a form you can use is an important part of being a data scientist. Now, a willingness to learn. Yes, you need to know some statistics. We'll go in a little bit deeper on that in a minute. Uh, and also the process of data analysis. I highly recommend these two books, Head First Statistics and Head First Data Analysis. Um, the O'Reilly Head First series does an excellent job of making the material very accessible and entertaining to read and easy for your brain to absorb and remember. Uh, you're also gonna need to learn some tools if you don't know them already. You need an analysis tool, Excel is a good start. Um, some data visualization and exploration tools, business intelligence tools, and even self-serve predictive analytics tools. Basically, you need a good tool set uh, to do the analysis and you'll see hear more about what sorts of tools are available in uh, the data analysis 
book. Um, it would be great if you knew more about databases and SQL and statistical programming such as R, but those really do kind of involve more technical analysis and maybe more technology than you want to get into. So why do you need to know more about statistics? Well, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics, which uh, Mark Twain attributed to Benjamin Disraeli. And the truth is that there's an awful lot you can do with statistics to mislead someone. And there's off an awful lot you can do um, in terms of being misled by statistics if you don't understand them. So here's an example. Uh, the per capita consumption of cheese in the United States is strongly correlated with the total revenue generated by golf courses. This is not fake, this is actual real data and there really is a correlation here. But what this does show you is that correlation does not equal a causal relationship. Just because these values tend to move together doesn't mean that they're related at all. Um, and if anybody can prove that these two are related, I'd be very impressed. So why basic statistics? Again, um, suppose you are a real estate agent and you are trying to convince people to move into a particular neighborhood. You could, with perfect honesty and truthfulness, tell different people that the average income in this particular neighborhood was 150K, 35K, or 10K. How could all of these be correct? Well, the 150K figure is the arithmetic mean of the incomes of all the families in the neighborhood. The 35K figure is the median, and the 10K figure is the mode. All of these are measures of average in terms of basic statistics. Uh, let's say that this particular neighborhood is lucky to be uh, near a cliff and one home has an ocean view uh, with, on 50 acres that's owned by a Hollywood star uh, and the rest of the neighborhood are a few middle class people and some riffraff. What does that look like? So here you've got one celebrity making 4.465 million. You've got five uh, professionals making 150K. Um, this is the mean. Uh, you've got 14 people making 50K uh, and one person making 35K. The median is the number that occurs exactly in the middle. And the mode is the number that occurs most often. And these 20 people are all making 10K. So there's an example of how you can give three different numbers for average and be correct about all of them, but not necessarily forthcoming. So we're almost there. You've identified a business problem worth solving. You've come up with a hypothesis to test. You've gathered data to test your hypothesis. You've learned some basic statistics processes and tools to help you analyze the data. Now, what are your conclusions and how do you communicate them so they can be easily and quickly understood? You need to do something a little bit better than this. You've probably been in meetings where people have communicated conclusions like this to you before, and it's really hard to, to get the gist of what somebody is trying to say based on numbers alone. So here is that same data in a bar chart. Much easier to read here. Here's another uh, uh, example of a visual communication tool for uh, daily ocean temperature statistics. Beautifully done here. And yet another one of four bad bear markets. And you can see how they follow similar patterns and you can compare and contrast all on one chart. So learning how to take the data you've collected and present it in a way that um, leads other people to understand your analysis quickly is a very important part of being your own data scientist. But visualizations can also be confusing and misleading, just like statistics. So here, we're graphing uh, the same data on both sides. But take a look at the scale of the y-axis here. It goes from 0 to 4,000. And over here, it goes from 3,650 to 40. 
4,150. There's a big difference when you change the scale. And same over here. Over, when you have a very large scale on the y-axis, even big changes can look like almost nothing. So your visualizations and how you choose to present them are also important in terms of clarity. So in summary, you need the scientific method. You, mean, you need domain expertise, and that means knowledge of your particular business. You need data, a willingness to learn, you got to study your basic statistics, basic data analysis process, and learn some helpful tools, and then learn how to visualize and communicate your results. This could be you out there making the big discovery. So go out and do some data analytics and be your own data scientist. Thank you.